Hi there, brothers and sisters. Living Stones, Sunday morning, nine o'clock. It's good that we've had some new people join Living Stones as well. And we do give you a warm welcome. It's great that we can all seek the Lord together and help each other move forward. So God bless you all who've joined recently. We have mostly the Facebook group. That's where most of the action takes place. Thought for the day and uh, different videos and series of Bible studies and uh, helpful um, thoughts that move us all forward. And we, we also have a Zoom meeting, which is later today, five o'clock. So please join us, if you can, for the Zoom meeting. Um, David Horton will be speaking tonight on Breakthrough. So that's five o'clock UK time. And we also have a, a YouTube channel as well. Um, but most of it happens in the Facebook group. So today it's Sunday Live, nine o'clock. And we've been looking at kings over the last few weeks. And today's the last week. Yeah, we're going to look at Manasseh, a king who failed. So let's look a little bit at his background this morning. Now, Hezekiah, the king, he was a good king, had just died when his eldest son Manasseh took over the throne. And he became the king of over God's people of Judah. And we read this in 2 Kings 21 verse 1. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. His mother's name was Hezibar. Hepzibah. Hepzibah. So Manasseh then was 12 years of age and do you remember when we looked at King Hezekiah? Well, King Hezekiah was extremely ill and about to die, but God granted him 15 more years. So let's think about this for a moment. Now, Manasseh, we can work out, was not born at the time of Hezekiah's dangerous illness. It seems afterwards. Yeah, and it seems that Hezekiah had no son to succeed him. Yeah, and according to Josephus, the Jewish historian, this was a cause of grief for Hezekiah, because you remember Hezekiah really wept yes. when he told he was going to die. And part of his grief was because it doesn't seem like he had an heir to the throne, which was very important to kings. Right, so if Manasseh was 12 when he came to power, that tells us that Manasseh was born in during the 15 extra years that Ezekiah was granted. So then he was born three years after Hezekiah's recovery from his sickness. Yes, that would make him 12 years old when he t t took, took the throne, the throne. Yeah. yes so hezekiah he did a couple of things that didn't turn out well during that 15 extra years it wonders you wonder should he have had the 15 extra years but god is very tender-hearted when we cry out to him yeah. but a couple of the things that happened during those 15 years is that the Babylonian envoys came to Jerusalem to congratulate him on uh, his newfound health and overcoming the sickness. And we read that there was nothing in his palace or in his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. That's 2 Kings 20.13. Now, Isaiah, the prophet, he did not seem happy about this disclosure to the Babylonian Empire, um, the envoys from the Babylonians. So, uh, Isaiah said, why did, why did you show them everything? Because that, it's true, isn't it? We ought to be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Mm. Because all that treasure that Hezekiah showed to the Babylonian envoys would 
at one point be taken over to Babylon. They, they knew, oh look, the, those Judeans, they've got all this treasure. Let's go and get it. And I guess the other king, the other thing that King Hezekiah did during those 15 years was to father Manasseh because Manasseh's reign was not a good reign. Okay then, so secondly, let's just take a peek at Manasseh's mother. Hepzibah. Hepzibah, which is the name that the church could be called and signifies my delight or pleasure is in her. And we read this in Isaiah 62 verse 4. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land any more be termed desolate, but you shall be called Hepzibah, and your land Beulah. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. So notice here that Isaiah prophesied and, and wrote this, and it was Isaiah who facilitated Hezekiah's recovery. Therefore, Isaiah would have known of the marriage of Hezekiah with Hepzibah. So he was right there in the thick of it. Yeah. Hepzibah had, uh, Hezekiah had 15 years extra in which he seems to get married to Hepzibah. He could have been married earlier, but it seems like it was after. Which Hepzibah, and, and that is a fit name for the church, of Christ, uh, who is uh, pleasant to the Lord, and he delights in in the church. In Song of Solomon 7, 6, we read, How beautiful you are, and how pleasing, my love, with your delights. And we are called the Bride of Christ, and Revelation tells us the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Yeah, Hepzibah, my delight is in her. Yeah. So Isaiah picks up on this parallel of the marriage of Hezekiah and Hepzibah, and he makes a special mention of her name in Isaiah 62, verse 4. So it's a good little parallel there that Isaiah brings out. Yeah. And it seems so, doesn't it? But as we said last week, if you remember, good parents don't ensure good offspring. For we read about Manasseh. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He also erected altars to Baal and made an Asherah pole, as Ahab king of Israel had done. He bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshipped them. So the people of Jerusalem and Judah seemed ready then to comply with Manasseh's wishes in order to obtain his favour. And the whole kingdom went from bad to worse. Now, Manasseh was not a good king. He was leading people astray. He was leading them away from God. Yes, he was 12 years old, we must remember, yeah. uh, when he first started out. Um, his father had died, Hezekiah. His mother, Hepzibah, would have still been there, I would have thought. Yeah. Um, but at this point, it seems that the fear of God had vanished from the majority of the people and corruption and vice increased and were openly practiced. And Isaiah speaks of, of those times, how mm. degenerate things became. Now, the previous king, Hezekiah, had time of uh, a, good, a good time of wealth and prosperity, but that can be a dangerous time as well, can't it, for people's souls? when everything's going well and you're prosperous, that can be a, a serious um, time to, to, to go through regarding temptations. Yes, because earthly riches can actually lead to spiritual poverty 
and how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, said Jesus. Yeah, so I, Isaiah describes what was going on and he tells us that the, they stagger, the people stagger from wine and stumble from strong drink. Priests and prophets reel from strong drink and are befuddled by wine. They stumble because of strong drink, muddled in their visions and stumbling in their judgments. For all their tables are covered with vomit. There is not a place without filth. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> what the Bible says. If you're eating breakfast. <laughs> oh, dear, sorry. So Isaiah 28, verses 7 and 8. So we see that the degenerate leaders got the young king, 12-year-old Manasseh, into their power. And they directed his education. They trained him up in their views. They seduced him into idolatry. And we can see how the situation got worse and worse. And of course, this was an abomination to the Lord. And the chosen people had chosen to go their own way, which meant judgment was sure to follow. And Manasseh, he built altars to other gods in the temple of the Lord, of which the Lord had said in 2 Kings 21 verse 4, In Jerusalem I will put my name. And Manasseh had changed that. Yes. And God has spoken to Moses, hadn't he? You shall not make any carved images. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. And that's what Manasseh did, even yeah. putting these things in the temple. So the, these were serious times of backsliding for um, Jerusalem and Judea. So Manasseh sacrificed his own son in the fire. This is how bad things got. He, he practiced divination, he sought almonds, he consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord. So you can see that the enemy there roaming around like a roaring lion. And the land was heading for judgment, just like our age is also. And it's as if all restraint had been removed from Manasseh. And moreover, Manasseh also shed so much innocent blood that he filled Jerusalem from end to end, besides the sin so that he had caused Judah to commit, so that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord, says 2 Kings 21 verse 16. Serious. He was pronounced by God to be more wicked than the Amorites who lived in Canaan before the Israelites went in there with their conquest and they brought judgment on the Amorites. The Amorites were displaced by Israel in an act of God's judgment. And you can read that in 2 Kings 21, 11. So we can see that judgment would not be long in coming where Manasseh's generation were concerned. And the people dismissed the message of the prophets that God had sent to them. So God then was going to bring calamity to Manasseh and his people. And it would be that bad that people who had heard of the judgment would have their ears tingle. God said he would wipe out the people of Jerusalem and they would be in the hands of their enemies due to their wicked ways. Not good. No, uh, it does actually say that, doesn't it? Let's, yeah. let's just look at that. Yes. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I am going to bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah that the ears of everyone who hears of it will tingle. Mm. Now, that is a judgment that excites alarm. And horror. Yes. You know, you know when an unexpected alarm goes off mm. and you're suddenly in the vicinity and it's in a building and it's really loud. Yeah. You hold your oh, yeah, ears, you hold don't your you? Ears, immediately. Don't you? Yeah, first thing you do. So that that's the alarm here. 
So the, the Lord continues. I will stretch out over Jerusalem the measuring line used against Samaria and the plumb line used against the house of Ahab. And the picture of the measuring line and the plumb line suggests the idea that Jerusalem would be leveled and laid even with the ground, as when leveling new ground for like a new building. Yeah, so the Lord continues speaking. I will wipe out Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And that's a serious verse is there. Yeah. Because we know that what happens when something is turned upside down, everything falls out. But we also see that the bowl, so to speak, is cleansed too, because we wipe a dish to cleanse it. And that's what God's judgment does. Good picture. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So the yeah. Lord was about to empty Jerusalem and Ju Judah. Yeah. So the Lord... Uh, punished Manasseh um, he, so that he may learn God's ways. Yes, and the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. See that? Yeah. And, and the Lord is gracious. He does speak to us. Yeah. And it's for us to pay attention to what the Lord says. For we've all gone astray. Each one of us has turned to our own way. But graciously, the Lord does speak to us. Yeah. But if we don't listen. So the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. So that's uh, what a graphic picture. Oh, very graphic yeah. there. Yeah. And, and this is what ha he says. In his distress... He sought the favour of the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors. It's like he had time to think there as well, isn't it? Well, he would do, wouldn't he? Yeah. Because he'd, he'd got this hook in his nose. Oh, yeah, and how horrible. He, he couldn't move. He was linked to mm. these Babylonians and, and he sought the Lord. And I think this is the verse where... In Hebrew, it, I think it says, when it says he sought the favour of the Lord, I think it's he stroked the face of the Lord. Wow. What, what an amazing verse. Yes. In yes. Hebrew. Yeah. Getting real close to the Lord here. And, and it's a situation we all have to come to, isn't it? Yeah. So... Uh, he humbled himself. And, and Psalm 119 perfectly suits this verse here because it says, It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. And this is what we... That, that's what happened to Manasseh. Yes, it? it is, for sure. Yeah. And this is what we read in 2 Chronicles 33, verses 10 to 13. So when Manasseh prayed... Yes, and when he prayed to him, Manasseh, the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. Wow. It shows you the tender mercy, really the does. loving kindness of God here. Mm. So if there's hope for Manasseh, there's hope for us all. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Manasseh thought upon what had passed. He began to cry for mercy and deliverance. He confessed his sins. He humbled himself. He condemned himself before God. He hoped to be pardoned through the abundant mercy of the Lord. Like David said, don't let me go into the hands of men mm. and let me cast myself on the Lord. For he, David knew that the Lord was full of tender mercy. So now Manasseh, he may have remembered his early years because remember he was only 12 yes, very when young. he went to the throne and, and it seems like the advisors got their teeth into him. Yeah. But his father Hezekiah would have spoken to him up until 
he was 12 years old. It was like he was swayed by his advisors as well. That's right, yes. But would God listen to him after all the wicked things he had done? Well, it's here we see the tender mercy of the Lord. Um, Manasseh knew that Jehovah was God, able to deliver. And he'd learned that. He'd learned that from Hezekiah because Hezekiah had to humble himself. Yeah. And sometimes we have to come back to our early years. A lot of people, they went to Sunday school or were instructed in the scriptures in some way yeah. when they were young. And those seeds that are planted in our hearts when we're young, they come to fruition maybe much later in our lives. It's like some seeds do that. You know, they can stay in the ground for uh, hundreds of years. Yeah, of course, of course. Even thousands of years, these seeds, True. and then suddenly germinate. So, praise God, he, he knew the God of his salvation because he'd learned it from when he was a young person and he learned to fear trust love and obey god from this time onwards manasseh was a new character and he walked in newness of life isn't it good that the law can change us as well for praise god you know yeah the law can cleanse us and we can come back to him yes and get to know him again it's it's wonderful and the lord did answer he, he, him even though he had found god and god had brought him back remember to jerusalem back to the his throne and his people and he knew he knew that god had forgiven him and we see god's mercy and his recognition for god here and after his captivity he built a very tall wall outside Jerusalem and he put army captives captains. In, captains in the fortified cities of Judah, although some still did worship idols. But Manasseh was now a changed man from wickedness to doing the right things. And he took out the image that he had put in God's temple and he got rid of it and all the foreign gods in Jerusalem. And he repaired God's altar and gave a thank offering to the true and living God. And I think that's wonderful. And he also commanded his people to serve the God of Israel. And Manasseh, he'd become, as we said, that changed man. He was a repentant man and he reigned for 55 years. Now, we know that when Manasseh died, he was buried in his garden and in his own home. And then his son Ammon became king, but he returned to idol worship. But he never went humbly to God and he continued to do the wrong things and sin, just like his father had done, although his father had now repented. But unlike his father Manasseh, he did not humble himself before the Lord, says 2 Chronicles 33, verses 22 and 23. His servants killed him in his own house, and Ammon he only ruled for two years. Not very long. Not long. And after that, we know Ammon's son, Josiah, became the king, and he smashed down the idol's to powder. So Manasseh had repented of his sin, but sadly he was not able to undo all the damage that he'd done to the nation or to his son, Ammon, who followed him. And we see that although Manasseh had repented, forgiveness does not always remove the natural consequences that comes from disobedience. True. And we can see, I think, some interesting lessons here, um, really. Uh, for instance, we can learn from Manasseh that he finally repented during his reign and that God can restore us if we humble ourselves and turn back to him even after we have done wrong. And he is the God who restores. Praise God. And that's good news for us today, it is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And God restores us from the joyless state of that broken 
fellowship when we accept his invitation to return to a close relationship with him. And that beautiful Psalm 23 verse 3 says, He restores my soul. Praise God. After all, God did create us, he made us, so he can restore us. And we see restoration and we see God's mercy and his transforming power over Manasseh's life of repentance and of forgiveness. And the Lord can also do these things in our own lives. And if we feel that we have failed God in our walk with him in some way, because sometimes we do feel that, don't we? And if we have humbly and truly repented, then we can know that transforming power of forgiveness in our own lives, even today. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you, Father, that you are able to transform us. You are able to restore us. And we thank you for your tender mercies, for your loving kindness, for your grace. Lord, you come to us so gently. Lord, and that's a lovely phrase, the way that Manasseh got so close, Lord, that he was able to, metaphorically speaking, stroke your face. Lord, how lovely. Lord, we think of of John, who lay in the bosom of the Lord Jesus, that closeness, that tenderness. Lord, may we also have that closeness to you, we pray. Lord, the things of this world can ensnare us, just as Manasseh was ensnared from 12 years of age. And yet, those seeds you planted in him began to grow. So, Lord, may the seeds that your Holy Spirit has planted within our lives begin to grow. May the fruit of the Spirit be seen in us, we pray, and the beauty of Jesus be seen in us, we ask in your precious name, Lord. We pray you'll be with us this day. Bless David tonight, Lord, later today as he speaks on Zoom, Lord, about breakthrough. We pray you'll bring people along, Lord, that we may be encouraged and blessed that we may help each other move forward in your kingdom, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's been lovely to have your company with us this morning. Yeah. So, yeah, five o'clock today. Zoom. Uh, <laughs> and um, if you need the login details, Jeannie can give you those. And if, um, if you're around on Monday... Tomorrow, nine o'clock, we have got a, a new video with Jeannie and Lizzie. You know, Kevin and I have been doing a series, haven't we, on Acts 27? Well, now it's Jeannie and Lizzie's turn, and I'm sure that we'll get something good from those videos. And they're all helping us grow, aren't they? And on Wednesday, we've got Bible study, nine o'clock, Jeannie again who will be taking us through the rest of 1 John 2. That's right. And into chapter 3 probably as well. Yeah, some really good uh, instructional lessons there in chapter 2 and chapter 3. Yeah. So it's taken a little bit longer to get through those. We're looking at warnings this week. Yeah, some warnings in the book of John. Okay. John. Yeah. Okay. And on Friday, we have a video at 9am, but you can scroll down and watch it anytime. And it's Dave Horton. Okay, that's good. Yeah, spiritual yeah. growth. It's good, isn't it, how we can help each other move forward in God's kingdom. And that's important for each one of us. Yes. Yeah, we need to, because we are a body of believers. We make up the body living stones. So we help each other move forward so you've got a part to play you need to help us move forward and encourage us and challenge us if necessary it's it's what the as long as it's through the holy spirit and we receive what each other says don't we yeah okay so um god bless you all god bless you and may you have a good week and hope to see you on zoom if you need the link please just leave a little message by three o'clock today and we'll get the link to you. God bless. Have a lovely day. God bless. Bye.